Indian cinema is our culture. Feel good, glamour, aesthetic, emotion, romance. The colours, the warmth, the songs, the dances, the kish, everything is our culture. That is what India is. Colour. Larger than life. Lot of music. And nothing is ever subtle. Like a like a you know full course meal, you know, it's like that. So it has to have everything. Which I think if you live in India you understand why. Indian cinema has always been very unique. Uh, it's always uh, uh, full of drama and emotions and, and music and everything. Because that's what uh, Indian society is all about. Uh, and why is Indian society like that? Because from a very young age, uh, we, are, we, are, we are taught the scriptures and there's a lot of uh, drama there. And there's, there, there are, the stories there are, are very real. And, and that's how Indian cinema manifested itself. This is purely uh, my own personal conjecture. Well, I think India has such a large population with a variety of people and I think they basically want a fantasy. After a hard day's work of breaking their backs, I think they just want to go and watch something where they feel, wow, you know, I wish we could be a part of that. We don't make one track films. In our films, emotions, drama, romance, comedy, music, everything has to be there. Our cinema is a brand of its own. We sell emotions like no one else does. We sell feeling like no one else does. And I One thing is everybody needs a hero, that's universal, everybody needs a hero. Everybody needs entertainment. And in India, there are not very many um, avenues for getting entertained and as much as you may deny it or as much as you may not accept it the only form of entertainment in India is films It's 
a strategic environment designed to make you sit in, you know, deep in your chair and look up at an angle at a screen. It's, it's, it's tough. It's a hard life. You come into the cinema hall, sit under a fan, and come give us three hours of your time, and, and we'll change your mind for three hours and just let you escape into a, into a maybe sometimes a surrealistic world, which you won't have to think about how to feed your family or how hot it is outside. हम लोगों को समझ सको तो हम लोगों को समझ सको तो समझो दिल भर जानी जितना भी तुम समझोगे उतनी होगी हैरानी I am very proud of the songs I am very proud of color I am very proud of the fact that we are over the top समझोगे उतनी होगी हैरानी अपनी छतरी तुमको दे दे कभी जो भर से पानी कभी नए पैकेट में बेचे तुमको चीज पुरानी फिर भी दिल है हिंदुस्तानी 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 एंड आई एम प्राउड मेनली बिकॉज आई नो आई एंटरटेन द लार्जेस्ट नंबर ऑफ पीपल इन द वर्ल्ड इवन इफ आई एम सिटिंग हेयर एंड मेकिंग अ हिंदी फिल्म which is 100 the budget of titanic i still know that more people watch me and i'm not saying it out of uh, uh, again being pompous more people watch me or as many people watch me as they watch anil schwarzenegger or as much as sylvester stallone or as much as brad pitt and more people feel at home in london in birmingham when they see me do a dance and feel very warm and cry remembering their homeland uh, and i'm very proud of that ignore the Indian film industry is you know we are the largest film industry in the world uh, we outproduce uh, I think any other film industry almost by 50% and that's an outstanding number <laughs> that Indian cinema is being now more or less accepted and in, in a much larger way than before uh, goes largely initially uh, to the non-resident Indian or the Asian that is settled abroad uh, who's craving to be close to his roots uh, and once they leave Indian shores the craving increases no matter where you may be you always want to know more about India to listen to its music, to eat its food, to dress uh, like the way India dresses. Uh, it's very difficult to tear yourself away from that. And for some odd reason, uh, Indian cinema has become representative of almost a parallel culture. I think film is the only link between us and NLS. They feel the roots are there. Today, there is a huge amount of identification amongst the uh, uh, Indians settled abroad uh, with Indian cinema. Uh, parents want to teach their child, their second generation or third generation kid uh, the, the Hindi or the national language, watch a Hindi movie. Uh, you want to see uh, or, 
or see how a particular festival or a custom is celebrated, or how Diwali is celebrated or how Holi is celebrated, watch the movie and they try to emulate it. Uh, it's great news for Indian cinema. Bollywood has its uh, commercial potential, I feel, and also a lot of uh, uh, foreign filmmakers are embracing the style, like Molin Roche. It, it embraces that uh, that style of filmmaking and maybe making it a little. It's making it like a Hindi film with an accent. You know what I mean? <laughs> Something like that. You know. Mila Rouge is a very good example. I mean, it's like an English Bollywood film. Chama Chama for its uniqueness of melody combined with the raw Indian beats. Uh, there's something about the way we do our songs uh, that has become uh, internationally appealing. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, forget it. Yeah. We have such a large audience of our own that filmmakers in India have never ever thought of addressing a world audience. They've been content addressing their own audience. They've never attempted to address a world audience. Um, and today I think the world is getting smaller and I think it is time that perhaps talent from India should consider uh, making films for a world audience also. They certainly shouldn't stop making films for their own audience, but they should look at every now and then making a film which is uh, meant to entertain a world audience. And I think there is a huge amount of talent in India which would be very successful at, at giving world audiences a, a rocking time. You have a market of an audience of a billion people and just by the volume of numbers it's a huge chunk of the market and plus there are so many Indians all over the world um, and the best part is that it's not only Indians abroad but now even non-Indians uh, local people of the local countries or whatever who have an interest in Indian films because it's just another perspective you know, it's a lot more colorful, it's a lot more grand with music and dancing and whatever. <laughs> you know, when you make movies, you want more and more people to see them. And 
when the film crosses over and it goes beyond your nation and goes to countries where where they are not supposed to know of your culture they are they don't have any they don't even have an idea where you're placed on the map when it reaches them i think it's a great feeling I think this is possibly the most exciting period of of Indian cinema since its inception. Now the time has come where we have directors and actors uh, who are willing to try new things, uh, make films which might not be within the confines of what we call commercial cinema, and try and do something different, and you know, just try your luck. And so far, I think most of them have paid off. <laughs> Well, I think the uh, I, I think the Indian uh, film industry is growing in a lot of ways, and there are a lot of uh, fresh and young talent coming in with their own sensibility. Yes, the world is gradually getting smaller. The... So the sensibility of people is getting more global. And as a result, the new filmmakers coming in, somebody like Farhan Akhtar or Ashutosh Gowarikar, are directors with a sensibility which is uh, appreciated and understood all across the globe. There's a whole new wave of directors. There's a whole new wave of new actors and newer technicians. So I think it's a whole new, new uh, younger lot. Um, you come in with newer sensibilities, you come in with newer takes on the same thing. It's the, one of the first films that is kind of youth oriented. You're telling a story, we're just modern day storytellers. That's all. दिन दिन भर हो प्यारी बातें झूमे शामे गाए रातें मस्ती में रहे डूबा डूबा हमेशा समा हमको राहों में यूं ही मिलती रहे खुशी Uh, there are going to be crossover films. Uh, there are going to be films which have uh, universal sensibility. There are going to be films which uh, people understand all over the world because I think cinema has its own language. It's a film written with a camera. Then it actually sums it up actually in a strange way because uh, you might, since you're a visual person, you would like to actually tell a story visually.
I was fascinated with dealing with Ashoka also in a very Bollywood way with integrating songs and you know everything so that at the end of it you have a film about a war. We had a golden period of cinema in the 50s with Bimal Roy, Raj Kapoor, uh, Guru Dutt. We made great films, great films, Piyasa, Kagas Ke Pool, Vintage Raj Kapoor, super films. And I think today, after 2001, I can safely say that we're heading towards that zone because for the first time in about 30 years, we gave the average Indian cinegoer a buffet of entertainment. <laughs> It's a story about the triumph of the human spirit. It's a story which is the underdog achieving the impossible, which is a very attractive concept. Lagan was made primarily for an Indian audience and uh, it is only when we started getting a lot of interest from people outside of India that we realized that it is actually appealing to audiences uh, from you know different parts of the world and we were of course thrilled and happy about that and probably I think because the theme is very universal and it's made with an international sensibility. One man produced a movie, uh, almost uh, you know, put everything together, acted in it, marketed it, went personally, caught hold of people on the street, see my film, and get, gets nominated to the Oscars. For best foreign language film, we have Amelie, France, Elling, Norway, Lagan, India. It was one of a hell of an experience, actually, because you know, all these years, I've been watching the Academy Awards on television. And this is the first time that I was actually sitting right there, not as a guest of someone, but representing the film, representing the country. It's a proud moment for any country. So it feels so good when you get to see, you know, an Indian film being nominated or up in the nominations for, for an Oscar. Whether you win or not is not the point. Yes, you are happy about the fact that they have recognized that here is an industry which can make noteworthy films. <laughs> India has made a lot of great films over the last 50 years, which a lot of people in different parts of the world have not seen, simply because they didn't know about it. You know, a film like Mother India, a film like Mughal Azam, uh, Piyasa. We've had such great filmmakers over the years whose work probably has not been exploited to the extent it could have been. Indian cinema is on its way to go completely universal and there is already an appreciation and uh, there is going to be much more. I definitely think so. I say this with a lot of sincerity. I don't think there's any difference at all in the talent that is present in India 
as compared to that in the West. I think we are equally talented, if not more. We make great films, so watch them for what they are. Yes, of course, we are beautiful women and they wear beautiful clothes, but beneath that entire upper crust, we have great cinema. Yeah, it's very exciting because I think in the next 10 years, Indian cinema is really going to blast onto the world stage and uh, everybody will have to stand up and listen and say, hey guys, these guys, you know, they're good after all.